My name is Benjamin Sumo Kill. I like being called Ben, not Benjamin. You can call me Benji. I don't care. Either way. 26. Um, pretty much got into writing. Okay, so my dad said I got into riding through my cousin, but he didn't ride bikes. And I never really remembered whether I got into bikes through him or not. But what I remember was from me always being interested in just extreme sports in general. So I would always watch like Woodward TV and Fuel TV and seeing stuff on props. And like, oh, I want to watch that, I want to watch that. And then later on, it just kind of came about and I ended up just getting a, like a 10 speed bike, but I ended up putting some BMX handlebars on it that my dad got from when he was working at Oakley because he would always be working with those types of dudes that would ride and so put those on had that as my main bike and I would just do curb stuff like jump curbs and whatever went down dirt paths really fast <laughs> um, and then later on, I was thinking to myself, man, I don't want to like do something crazy and then have my bike break and then I hurt myself. So then I was like, what kind of bike is like strong, but like the same thing as I have. And then that's what got me thinking like, what kind of bike I should get. And then that's when I started to realize, oh, I need to get like a BMX bike. So I started researching BMX bikes and eventually I came down to like two of them. It was either a Fit or a Miraco bike. And I had to pick with her which one to get. I was looking into specs and all that, but at that time I didn't really understand any of that. So I just went with what was cool and came to the conclusion I'm going to get the fit. So I saved up money from doing chores and then sold my PSP to get the rest of the money and then went out to Bike Alley in California because that's where I'm originally from and bought the fit bike it was a fit bike part three specifically for I think 750 for a complete that was the first real BMX bike that I got the but the one before that was a Haro it was like a poop color brown, super heavy, it was like 40 pounds. I learned to bunny hop on that. And then after that, that's when I got the Fit Park 3 bike. And then from there forward, I just rode every single day. I mean, I had the chance to because I was homeschooled. Um, yeah, and then just went up from there. Started going to skate parks after I got more comfortable and then started doing uh, some contests but was never really good at them and then ugh. I did go to Woodward in my second year of riding bikes went there for a week as a camper and then learned a bunch of stuff there and then next summer I believe I went for two weeks the first week I worked there so I could stay and then the second week I had it paid for so I just got to chill but I was so tired 
from working that I didn't prepare me for <laughs> the next week. So there's some memories there. Uh, what were some of your favorite parks growing up then, <clears throat> there in California? Favorite parks were obviously the best one, Vans, indoor park. At Orange? At Orange. That was, that was a great park, RIP. RIP. That was pretty much my stomping grounds there. That's where ev went there every Thursday and I can't remember when they are open. I want to say Tuesdays and Thursdays and then uh, Long Beach was open for Wednesdays for bikes. Yeah. So all the days that were open there, I went. Um, met a bunch of people and then... Well, it's like, first time going there, I was more of the kid of just kind of like do my own thing. I didn't want to like ride with anybody. I had music playing all the time and I just wanted to focus on practicing tricks. And then I was like, man, I want to be a little more social while riding. And then eventually more and more people started coming up to me asking my name and and then after that it kind of like snowballed and then we all ended up becoming friends and then everyone that was at the skate park knew each other and then pros would come and you'd get to meet the pros and watch them ride and then we all ended up becoming friends just from riding the skate parks not like going out and hanging out. It was just more just skate park friendship. If you know, you know. <laughs> you know. Um. So, you spent a lot of time going to the skate park as a young kid, but, but you definitely, with working with you and filming you, definitely have more of a street style. Um, where does that come into play? Uh, so, the whole idea of that was more... <laughs> trying to figure out how to explain it. Because I wanted to get into park riding because that's what I grew up watching, like Alex Heim. Alex Heim was on New Pollution. I used to watch that all the time. And he was like one of the main dudes that I would love to watch. I think at the time he was like 13 and I was 12. Um, but his type of riding, I was like, oh, that's what I want to do. But then later on, I was like, that's not figuring out how to ride my bike and seeing the tricks that other people do that aren't park wise. Park tricks. I was more into the street style of riding. So then I feel like that's what kind of turned me more into a street rider. Cause then after that, I was seeing a lot more of the fit dudes ride. So like Dakota Roche and Chase Hawk, uh, Chase Dehart. I would say Tommy Dugan, but he's like both, but I was still inspired by all their writing. And then Ben Snowden. Um, and then eventually I was like, I'm just gonna stick with more of these street style tricks and then started to learn grinds and spins. And, and that's pretty much how I got into more of the street style aspects of BMX. I was never really in, never really into the ramp riding, like airing out and flips and stuff. I would just never interest me. 
I like more of the technical stuff, but then now finding out it's like the technical writing is so dang difficult. So if I can find like one bangers and stuff I know how to do with some technical stuff like linking combos and lines together, then I'll do it. But other than that, it's pretty much Yeah. What I mean by like the technical writing, it's more of like the We The People crew. That's technical writing. Cause they link all the tricks that they have learned and they put it into lines and combos. So the lines come with the combos of tricks that they do. So like a, the most notorious street trick is like a, you go Smith to nose to bar, but then there's more, of, that's technical street writing. And then you have more of like the basic street writing of just sending it kind of like how the BSD crew does. More of like the one bangers, the more fast and crazy stuff, just kind of sending it, street writing. Um, but then I'm also more of a setup writer, like the setup has to be what I envision it, and it, if it's not, then it's hard for me to like come up with stuff. And we filmed a lot, I've, I've filmed you writing a lot, and I enjoy filming you. Um, and in that process, I've learned Even when you're just having fun and we're not trying to do anything serious, you, you take a lot of the stuff that you cannot land or you have trouble landing very seriously. Yeah. Where do you think that comes from? Why do you beat yourself up so much over that? Because I set high expectations on my writing. And I think I've been like that ever since I started. Because I would see all these dudes doing it and it's like oh i could do that it looks easy and then i go and try it and it's not at all obviously there's like learning aspects and you got to put your time in to learn these tricks but it's the when you can when you learn the tricks and you get them dialed I was like, all right, now I can start putting in these tricks into combos. And then that's where I'm like still learning on how to do that kind of stuff. It's taking what I know and applying it to street riding. And then if there's combos available to do on the street setups, I want to do those. And so I try them and I can't achieve them in the day of writing or however long I'm there at the spot, doesn't matter how many days, if I can't get it, I get super frustrated because it's like I can do these tricks. I can see myself doing it in my head. So I should be able to do it, but then I can't physically. And then that's when the whole mental breakdown starts happening. Well, I get fatigued, but then I want to keep trying. And I know I should stop, but I don't want to stop. But then I just keep going. And then my body ends up just not being able to do it. But my mind keeps saying, just do it, just do it, just do it. And so I'm thinking, oh, it's like mind over body. If your mind can do it, if your mind can think it and do it, and you can think of yourself doing it, I should be able to do it, but then it just doesn't work that way sometimes. I think to like put all of what I said together, it just comes from that, like wanting to be better in the sport that you're doing. Specifically for myself, it's I want to be a better writer. 
And if I can't achieve these tricks and goals that I want in riding, then it really messes with my head. And then I don't see myself as that type of rider I want to be. So then that's when I start thinking that I'm like not as good as a rider as I want to be or should be, if that makes any sense. No, it absolutely makes sense. That's, that's really kind of more of the deeper answer I was looking for. Um, and even with that, like everything that I do <clears throat> is I put that expectation on myself. So like photography and videography and when I was working out doing CrossFit, did that for six years. I would always put these goals and stuff. And if I couldn't achieve those goals and all these different things that I wanted to do, then I feel like I wasn't at the level that I wanted to be at. But then it also comes down to like, especially in Oregon, the weather and all that. The whole Oregon thing in moving up here six years ago from Cali, Um, that's when my, I guess this is kind of, kind of go along with the whole street riding thing. That's when moving to Oregon from Cali, I never really rode street in Cali. It was always skate park, skate park, skate park. I would occasionally go out with friends and ride street. But when I moved here, that's when my street riding got way more, way more better. <laughs> got a lot better because the skate parks here weren't as good as the one in California the ones in California so it kind of forced myself to get out and ride downtown Portland more and then I think doing that and riding all the different spots had really leveled up my riding in a way that I didn't think would happen. And I still would like to do more with that, but the weather in Oregon, once it hits winter time, you're done riding. And that could be for months at a time. So the really, the only times that you could ride and progress and get better is during the summer. So if you're wanting to move to Oregon, don't move there for riding. But if you want to quit riding and you want to go to Oregon, there you go. <laughs> but then people have always said, or family, whatever, friends, were like, well, why don't you do winter sports and all that? It's like, I could, but I want to focus on bike riding and getting better at that. So yeah, let's talk about that, your photography. You said you've been doing the photography for a little while now. Um, please tell me more about that and, and what your vision is with that. So the photography thing, that was like, I've always was drawn to it. When I was younger, I always was messing with cameras and stuff like that and just taking video of just random stuff around the house but I think it really started when I started when I started riding more seriously because riding bikes you're with your friends they want clips film so then you just film stuff with your phone and you can be as creative as you want you can zoom in and out of clips you can get super close super far away kind of lets you be more creative in that aspect of photography and videography stuff with bikes. And then from that, pretty much 
got me into wanting to shoot more photos. So when I, I think I was 14 when I got my first camera. Or no, not when I was 14, it was in 2014 is when I got my first camera. It was a Canon T5i and then from there, it I wanted to do more of like landscape and cityscape photography, just going out in nature and the city of LA. I had to have my dad drive me out there to go take photos because I couldn't drive at that time. But I was never really into the street photography stuff because I didn't really know what that was back then. I was more into just not being around people and getting photos of not people, just like the urban stuff around me and going out to lakes and mountains and taking photos of that because that's what I liked. And then eventually from there, moved to Oregon. And then that's when the whole street photo thing started. And I've already, and from that, I've already been doing the street photography for six years, but in all general of my shooting and taking video of BMX and all that, I've been doing it for a, a decade. And then moving here, just like with the bikes, with BMX, how my my street riding got better, and that's when my when I decided to just go out and take photos in downtown Portland, and that's when my photography got a lot better, and I wasn't necessarily going out and taking cityscape stuff or urban stuff or even uh, landscape stuff. I started to focus on more of the people in Oregon. Uh, more downtown stuff, not all of Oregon, but same thing. And then that's when I started to figure out, oh, this is what street photography is. And it kind of reminds me of <clears throat> BMX, because it's like going out and doing street riding. You're going out with your camera and you see a moment that's happening. It's like, oh, I got to get a picture of that. So either you're running to get it, or you're kind of like waiting on the corner, or just kind of like searching for the spot, but you're, you're just searching for the next interesting person that you see, or the cool, um, like reflection off like a, the water puddle in the street, or, just how a building is lit up. Um, it's kind of like street riding in that way. Finding spots and then you get to do your trick on the spot and then it's like, yeah, that was sick. And then it's kind of like the same thing with taking photos. You get that same rush or the same feeling when you actually get the photo that you want especially if it's like super up close because then you can always you'll always have that fear of the interaction after you take the photo of the person if they look straight at you <laughs> but usually they don't really care i used to be so scared of doing that but now since i've been doing that a lot more it's like i learned that they don't care at all besides from this one homeless lady from far away, I was taking pictures of her in the background of these mountains and she saw me. And it's like, are you taking pictures of me? And of course, in my head, I was like, yeah. <laughs> but I wasn't gonna, I already knew the outcome. If I said yes, she would have just gone off on me. And I was like, no, I wasn't. But she kept nagging at me. I was like, no, I didn't take any pictures of you. And then eventually she just went away and I was like, Ugh. those moments you gotta figure out in your head, 
in those few seconds whether what you should say or not. I mean, there's nothing wrong with taking pictures of people in public because there's no rules to that. Obviously, if you're in private areas and stuff like that, be more cautious, but yes, photography and in general and taking uh, video and stuff like that pretty much all came from bike riding because that's what you do with your friends and stuff like that and it's always drawn me into that aspect of creativeness and the whole depression thing that came about right when I moved to Portland because beforehand, living in California, um, I never really knew what depression was. I never knew what stress was or anxiety was. I was never taught like specifically what it was because it wasn't like a thing that people talked about. So I just was like, I didn't even think of it. And then it wasn't until <coughs> moving to Portland. So once my parents got divorced in 2017, and then during that time, my mind was like, whatever. I didn't have any emotion. I didn't, still didn't understand what depression or anxiety, stress, all that was. So being a Cali kid and being in the sun 24 seven with hardly any rain and then moving straight to Portland where it rains most of the time, very little sunny uh, season, I don't even, it's not sunny in Oregon a lot. You get the summer and then it's done. I'm so, just so, gonna rewind and then. So you move up here with with your parent with your dad. Yeah, I moved uh, up here with my with my dad. And then his parents. And his parents lived there two years, and then that's when everything started to just fall downhill, because I didn't realize how much weather can play on your mind, in your body, especially if you're coming from California where it's the sunny state and then coming here to moving to Oregon where it's raining most of the time and then not being able to ride your bike and be outside because that's what I like to do. That really messed with my head. And then that's when I started to realize what depression was and anxiety and stress was because I like no one told me but I just started asking questions that I've never asked before and then that's when I started figuring out what all that was what kind of questions were you asking just what specifically depression was and what stress was and anxiety was like going on YouTube and asking like what other people are saying about it and then I'm kind of think like oh am I going through that and then I was and then I started to figure out that I actually had depression because of moving to Oregon there was like a word for it that my stepmom would talk about like the seasonal change. Seasonal you, depression? Yeah, that. Okay. Not seeing friends and not seeing family. Like my sister and my mom for a bit. And having to deal with my grandparents and just being in a whole new environment really messed with me. And that's pretty much how 
that all started. And then it just escalated from there. So it's like all these things coming in and that's how it happened. And I also want to know like, how does that feel when you're in it? So for me personally, it's more of this dread of like, I don't know, it's like hard to explain because it's so mental and I have a hard time explaining what's going on in my mind. Um, but when I'm in it or feel it, it's a lot of circumstances that come about and just overwhelming situations that make it arise. Um, but when I'm in it, I'm more like, I want to say I'm depressed, but I'm trying to <laughs> explain like what it is while I'm in it. It's more of this like hopelessness and not wanting to do anything and just be in bed and sleep and not do anything. You feel like you have no, there's like a lot of things that come along with it. Like you feel like you don't have goals and dreams, but I'm thinking if you don't have goals and dreams, you can get depressed easily because mm -hmm. you can see like, oh, nothing's happening. So I'm just not going to do anything, but I'm glad that like BMX and photography and, and those things have been in my life because those things have really helped me like get out of it from time to time but even being in it when I would have depression on certain days or maybe weeks on end I don't would I wouldn't necessarily want to do any of that stuff but I know if I just went out and did it it would go away and then I would feel a lot better. Um, and even just not working out like I used to, I think caused some depression in that as well. Because I don't work out anymore and I want to work out and then I see myself going down more of like not not working out and then not caring about myself on a level that I should I end up not taking care of myself and then with that mindset comes the depression and then it just spirals down into more darkness and then you end up not doing anything to better yourself besides from the stuff that you already know um, that, that, if you can figure out how to get out of that cycle then I think you could overcome it but if you're just in it it's very hard to get out especially if you don't know the questions to ask or the people to ask because a lot of people don't want to talk about it even myself and I was reading like a study and it, I don't remember the percentages it but I read that the people that have more of the creative side are more likely to be depressed and go through that kind of stuff. And the people, I'm just putting it out, like the people who aren't that creative don't really deal with it, but the people who do have it. I'm, I don't know how else to say that. <laughs> uh, the creative types are more recognizable that they, that they suffer from 
a level of depression and a level of anxiety than someone who might not be as creative as, as the next person? Is that what you're trying to say? Yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, do you take medication? Uh, not anymore. Not anymore. Do you, do you believe people should take medication? Are you so, anti-medication? Are you kind of do as you see fit and explore your own? Growing up, I was never into doing... Well, first of all, growing up, I never knew what that kind of stuff was or what medication did. I just heard people would take it. And then moving to Oregon, uh... I was still on that same mindset of not wanting to take medication. But then the time that I was like, all right, since I'm doing, since I'm going to get treated for depression, oh yeah, and depression, the depression that I had turned into being suicidal and I dealt with being suicidal for three years. And it wasn't like attempting to do that, it was more on the uh, the suicidal ideation. So your mind would think of ways to off yourself. I don't even know if you can say kill. Um, if you're putting this on YouTube, yeah, yeah, we'll see how that goes. I don't give a uh, shit. But with that, that's when I was starting to think, you know what, maybe I should just take medication because they're saying, oh, it could help with this, it could help with that. So I was like, you know what, I'm just going to do it and we'll see if it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. So I started taking medication. I was going to um, IOP, I think that's what it was called. So I had to do zoom classes and stuff and uh, I had to do little sessions every week and talk to a counselor and from there that's when everything started to get a lot better I still think I see I should see a counselor because I'm starting to get in my freaking head again because of the winter time in Oregon. Um, but then people would say, well, just get out of that. It's like, then you don't get it. I used to not believe in it. I think you, if you really want to change, you can change. Do what, it need, do what you need to do to, to make that change. And if you don't want to do medication, you want to go more herbal, herbal route than do that but for me I chose med I chose meds I took uh, anti depression meds and then one for anxiety that really helped my brain um, kind of like to get out of those moments but then after taking that for months and months on end I started realizing I wasn't myself and I felt more like a zombie and I didn't like that so I was like all right I need to stop taking it and the perfect chance came up to where I was like oh you need to renew your your prescription thing and of course that anxiety comes up I was like oh man I gotta talk to people on this and that and I was like oh look this opportunity came up and Maybe this is when I stopped taking it. So I decided, you know what, I'm just going to stop taking it. So one day I was at the men's group thing I was at with my church. And then I was talking about it with them. And they all ended up praying for me. And that whole month, I was like, all right, I'm doing this. I'm not going to take them at all. I'm not gonna go get it renewed. I'm just gonna cold turkey it and just send it. And then that was horrible from the relapses that those drugs give you from not taking them. 
I started to spiral more into the <coughs> suicidal thinking again and the depression hit really hard not wanting to go to work and not ride not take photos didn't want to do anything but I just kept sticking with it and eventually that month went by and then I didn't I felt 10 times better I and then after the three years the suicidal stuff stopped and the depression I would say went away from what it used to be it's a lot more mild now I'm not gonna sit here and say it's totally gone like a lot of other people do I think that's a complete lie so I think you can get 100% healed like my suicidal thing so then saying what I just said completely just makes no sense um, but what the depression I had before is not there but I still get it it's not as, as severe as what I had but it's more controllable because of the things I learned in ILP and um, and from the medication that kind of helped my brain to be more normal where is Ben headed? In the next year, two years, where is where where is Ben heading? What what is, what are Ben's goals to accomplish? I have no idea where I want to be in the next few years because I don't even know what's gonna happen the next day. <laughs> I just kind of wing stuff, but I'm starting to learn having goals and dreams helps a lot so this year in 2023 I decided I was hearing that change is gonna come so I was like all right I'm gonna take that as it is so I was like I'm, I really want to change and be more for this year I want to be more outgoing and be more out there and, and be more available in doing stuff so doing these this, doing this trip and the trip I did to California both for a week that was more being able to have the time and money to do it especially getting to do this these trips was possible because of being able to work with my dad and having it more flexible because so I could work and get the money saved up and then I can just go out and do whatever because my dad's super chill about being able to do stuff like that I'm what I'm doing right now he's very supportive on that um, so more trips like this is a goal and a dream of mine and I'm doing it so that's pretty much checked off <laughs> and then uh, another thing that started as a change was being more outgoing and stuff with my photography and not being ashamed of what I'm doing because I struggle with being, I'm, I struggle with my creative side and not really wanting to show it to people with my photography. So I decided, you know, if I'm going to take these photos because I've been doing it for so dang long, why not show my stuff instead of just letting it sit and no one would ever see it. So I was like, what if I take everything I learned from filming and photography and just put it into YouTube as like just a hobby and something fun to do and I can showcase my work like that 
So I said, why not? Let's just do it. And so far that's been a great way to show my stuff. And then I started posting on Instagram more because I had an Instagram from my photography way back. But, and I did post and I did all the hashtags and all that, but it just became this like chore and I hated it. And then I stopped doing it. And then I focused more on BMX because that's what I wanted to do at the time. And now I feel more balanced out, like I can do both and still have fun. Um, so that change came when I started doing YouTube and being more expressive with my photography and showing my photos and stuff like that on Instagram and YouTube. And I would like to have that as a job, but right now it's just more, I just have to have fun with it. Cause the first couple hundred videos aren't going to be the best. It's when you've put those out, that's when you start learning uh, what works and doesn't work. But right now I'm just doing whatever, whatever's fun to me, that's what I'm going to do. Um, so that was another big change for me and another, and I think the third change was getting away from typical jobs like the Home Depot thing and um, even working for you at 503 BMX, that was a big change because that was something I also wanted to do when I was a kid. It was like, oh, work at a bike shop. That would be so sick. And then I got to do it and it was, yeah, this is sick. <laughs> <laughs> Can be. I, I thought it was fun. I, I enjoyed having you. Um, and then, I mean, you made, my, you made my shop freaking so much more than I could have done by myself, really. The, the, the regulars freaking love you, uh, you know, Webster, freaking Chris, Mike, freaking, they all, all of them fell in love with you. Yeah. I and love then the boxing, every, everyone on freaking social media loved that. Obviously, people decided to copy that shit. <laughs> and if you know me, I'm just going to say this. You'll see, if you really know me, you'll see more of the real side of me so especially when you go on lives and stuff you'll see more like what I'm going through in my head and I'm not just gonna show off and be a monkey to you <laughs> viewers because uh, I don't care for that I just if you see me I show more of the realness and that's what I'm all about I hate being fake to people so just wanted to point that out yeah, I think that's that's a double-edged sword because especially with like the, the, the plans of social media, people start off being very real and very honest and, and then they just develop a character mm -hmm. and they start getting paid to be that character and then that be character becomes them and then that, that's when the idea of sellout and hate comes your way and all that and they're just trying to make a living just like anyone else in this world and something that they're passionate about mm -hmm. so becoming fake online i feel like it's a really double-edged sword and it's really hard to avoid that so it's, for me it's more like if you catch me in a good mood i'm gonna be more like out there and like excited but if you get me more in like this, like I'm super focused trying to get things done and more like overwhelmed, stressful thinking mood. I don't even know how to say that. Um, you'll see it, but. Well, awesome. 
Thank you, Ben. You're welcome. This was fun. <laughs> I don't ever get to like do this. No, uh, yeah, that's not the whole camera and this just talking. Yeah. No, uh, it's it's a. Uh... And this is what I was what I was saying, how the whole change thing was like. This is what I'm talking about: being more outgoing and 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 out there. So this was cool. <laughs>